Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for episode four of season one of the Owl House. Let's get ready to hop in. If you want to see the full length reaction, as always, you can check it out over on Patreon or for coming over to the channel and get you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes to react to the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover on the channel. You also can suggest and vote what movies to react to each month. It's just a great way to support the channel and help us do the things that we do over here. But at the end of the day, really appreciate it. Enjoy this reaction. At least leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already, because it really helps these videos out. Now that also nail away, let's go ahead and hop into episode four, The Intruder. Here we go. And here we have the most fearsome creature in the world, the king of demons, placing his natural enemy, the ducky sock. <laughs> Where are you, ducky sock? So, why'd you call me here again? Oh, yeah, human loose. You've been so obsessed with witchcraft that you haven't learned anything about my kind. Prepare yourself. Oh, some demonology. Demons 101. Demons like me are grim tricksters of the twilight, creatures of sulfur and bone. And cute little paws. <sighs> And cute little paws. True. Hey, live only he's not going to deny that. Misery. Our only weaknesses are drafts. <laughs> passive aggressive comments sometimes. Oh, you guys are sensitive. Even demons have inner demons. <laughs> the most powerful demon of all is the Snaggleback. He is a bad boy. What Close. the hell? <laughs> this information could save your life someday. The no, big no, book I of misery. Paying attention. This is my paying attention face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh oh, looks like it's gonna rain. <gasps> the horror of cooking. Hey, wait. So you sold your soul. I always love feeling the first few drops in my hair. I bet you do too, little buddy. What? Boiling rain! Oh, boiling now? rain. Huh? I was gonna say it's literal acid rain. Well, that was close. Same thing, but I guess. The important thing is, you didn't get hurt. Yep. <laughs> Not hurt. Damn. She got slung like a boomerang right into that shelf. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, run, little football, run! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh my gosh, I love you so much. I love boiling King too. On the boiling aisles. The weather here is so fun. Yeah. We don't fun. Have we have plagues, tornadoes, shale, hail, pain. I'm sorry. It's like Did rainbow. I hear gornadoes? So, until the boiling rain stops, no one is allowed outside. I'd like to tonight. see an example of that, please. Doesn't get you the snaggleback will. Well, whatever the case, this force field spell should protect the house from boiling rains and made up demons. Hurry it up with that force field! That rain is getting closer to my precious stucco! We gotta protect his stucco, man. Oh, wow. nice. Sunday, it conforms to uh, the fit. The lady. Magical, sassy, surprisingly foxy for her age. Hey, why do they call you the hey. owl lady anyway? Call so it like you see it. Because she coughs up rat bones. I think it's because she gets distracted <laughs> by shiny objects. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> it sparkles and shimmers. It shines and delights. I must have it for my nest. <laughs> <laughs> I that is hilarious. <laughs> Oh, that force field really took it out of me. Uh-oh, moving a little slow. Age finally catching up to you. Ah, darkness! Hey, rude. Since we'll be stuck in the house all night, Ida won't have any excuse not to teach me a spell. But don't you want to finish our lesson? I was gonna let you scratch a demon's tummy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but magic. Damn. I feel bad. He just wants some attention and to talk about his kind, and she's all she cares about is the blasty, blasty spirit fingers. I told you how rad your fang looks today. Whatever it is, no. And your hair is like, girl. I'm not teaching you magic tonight. I'm sleepy. I'm a sleepy little owl. How am I supposed to earn my witch's staff if Ooh. I don't know any spells? No. <laughs> Sparkle thing. Sparkle thing. Wow. This? Ooh. Oh my god. Teach me one spell, and I'll give you your sparkle thing. I respect your cunning, but I also hate you for it. <clears throat> if you want a witch's staff like mine, don't make me repeat myself. 
Witch's staffs have power embedded into them. She like really, really tired? Like if she like stays awake too long, is she just gonna like pass out? Tonight, I will show you how to create light. Nice. Yawn. Who needs another boring spell lesson when you could be learning all the fun ways a demon could kill you? Look how teethy. Fight, fight. Be quiet. I need to focus. Aww. Now, humans think magic is made out of thin air, but that's stupid. Everything comes from something. The law of equivalent exchange. Mm -hmm. From the heart? Actually, you're right. It comes from a sack of magic bile attached to a witch's heart. Oh, gross! Can I keep that? No. Now, everything depends hmm. on the spell circle. The bigger the circle, the then... more powerful the spell. Hmm. But how okay. How can I do magic if I don't have a magic bile sack? I was you about to I'm ask that question. Sure. What? Okay, she know, she has no answer there. In the past, but I never bothered to figure out how. <laughs> Ida! Don't worry, hmm. you'll figure it out. Ancient magic. We must discover the secrets. That's it? Wait, I, I need to see you do the circle thingy again. I'll record it on my phone this time. One more spell won't kill you. Uh, fine. I mean... Now you see the... You say that. Looks yeah, like I think it might kill her. Ah! Oh my gosh, my obsession with spells knocked out Ida. I'm a monster. Bap. Yep, she's out. <laughs> Just making sure. We should get help, right? I'm surprised he didn't do it one more time. Finally rains, remember? No, let her try. It'll be funny. <laughs> 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 Oh, Another hootie. Right got cut off last week. That woman could survive anything. She's probably just tired from staying up all night chasing shrews and voles. We can't just leave her on the floor. Oh, she's an owl lady. Oh, she's got a sick little window room. Wait. Sorry for wait. You, Miss Ed Whoa, hold on. She actually has a nest. Window in her room is what I was trying to say. Elixir of the day? Oh, there it was. There was the extra slap. It just came a lot later than I expected. Why you gotta be so cryptic, Owl Lady? Now you see the spell circle is really cute. Hey, you know what's really cryptish? Let me tell you about the most spine-chilling demon. Smoochy Pie, the sweetie baby! Oh my is, god. Is How many of these are actually real? Not now, King. I want to figure out this spell. But if I don't have a magic sack, what's the point? Why do you want to learn magic so bad anyway? I was a nobody back home. Do you know what it's like to have no one take you seriously? I think he uh, knows very, very intimately at this moment. Spell. Could we finish our lesson? You can teach me about demons all week if you help me learn this spell. Well, she said witches used to do magic differently, so there has to be a way, right? Every day I notice Ida sneaking drinks of this special elixir. Then she always gets a boost of energy. I think that's where she gets her powers. And I know where to get some. Thank you so much, um, King. I mean... I'm king. Right. Hey, do not get it wrong. He is not no lowly prince. Now, where could it be? Hmm. I don't know if we should just drink some random elixir I that she die. she has yeah, by her bedside. <laughs> An elixir a day. Cryptic. What's the rest of it say? The half of that tag is missing. Keeps the what away. What is the what is the rest of the saying? Oh no, King. Can't believe I'm about to learn magic. Real magic. This is historic. Oh, well, better lap it off the floor. Need the light spell when we have tons of lamps. Uh, Hootie controls the house lights. He probably just fell asleep. Oh. No. What? Uh. Is he okay? Whatever did this escaped into the um, rain. Um. Can we can we fix that? <laughs> Feeds during the rains. It must have stumbled across our house and seen us inside. <laughs> Or is that Ida? Like, that looks like her hair. 
This would be a great way for you to see a wild demon up close and personal. You want to go toward those creepy sounds? Or we're going to be like, hey, maybe you should have listened to King all day today because now it's going to be very necessary. Wah! <laughs> well, oh my gosh, Ida, she's gone. That or that was her. Slash marks. King, you're the demon expert. I need your help. I'll go get my demon book. Something like that. Elixir. Like. Wait, first edition or second? I don't know. Lose? The Snagglebeck got her. Dude, it's got to be Ida. Does this elixir suppress some primal side of her or something? The owlness of her? An elixir a day keeps the owl away. Snaggleback. Oh. Wow, you are a lot shorter in person. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just needed a place to hide from the reins. And why did you break down our door and take loose? That's not cool, that man. That wasn't That's him. Snaggleback. I, I, I didn't do any of that stuff. I snuck in through a window just now. Huh? Well then, what? Oh no! A twist! <laughs> oh my! She just eat it again. I'm full on that this is Ida. King of demons, okay? And as such, I demand you to barf my friends back up. Oh yeah, it definitely is from that silhouette. Good God, though. Loose? King! Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. I was checking on Ida, and she was gone, and then you were gone. I also tripped and lost my shoe. Oh, hey, you found it. Uh, what's that? Keeps the curse at bay. Oh. An elixir a day keeps the curse at bay. Curse? Wait, what are you trying to say? Ida's cursed. That creature is. Ida. Whoa. Wait, is she asleep? Oh no. That was her pupils. Wow, she like is like part owl. She's like an owl bear, except eat up. <laughs> Dude, that is such a wicked design. Oh man. She's cursed. The elixir I gave you doesn't give Ida powers. It prevents her from turning into that thing. She's turned into a nightmare and it's all my fault. I'm so sorry, Luce. I just Aww. wanted you to be into demons like you're into magic. I don't have many friends and no one even pays that much attention to me. I thought maybe if I taught you, finally someone would care about creatures like me. Well, let's finish the lesson. Huh? No. Who knows more about demons than the best teacher in the world? Aww. <laughs> Let's see. She was bigger, covered in feathers, and had giant black eyes. Demons with black eyes are usually sensitive to light. Luce, yep. Use your human wonder rectangle. <laughs> what about that light spell? You saw me. Oh. Spell circle is really cheap. Oh, uh, wait. Whoa. What the fuck? There's a pattern in the spell circle. It looks like this. There. Oh! Oh! Well, look at that! It's beautiful. If we want to take it back to full metal, she's actually got to write the alchemy circle. She's got to do the whole process. She's not like one who's seen the gate and can just summon it forth. You help me? Boo boo buddy. She's. Hmm, I'm kind of over that nickname, but okay. Let's go. She's actually got to invoke the glyphs themselves. She can't oh, just do the circle thing do we have alone. Here? It's just so dang shiny. Oh my, dear. Hmm. <laughs> 
Wow. Holy shit. Wow, that knocked her right out of it. Oh! Ah. What happened? Oh, wait. What is that on her chest? Is that an extra eye? Because that was glossed over, too. Hey, he's alive. Lie here for a minute. Hmm, I was looking for that. Actually, we found an extra one in your closet. You stole my elixir. I ought to break every bone in your. Shh, over there. No. Well, how is she doing that? I don't know, but she did it all on her own. I haven't been completely honest with you guys. When I was younger, uh, I was cursed. I don't know exactly how it happened. That's why people call me the Owl Lady. No one likes having a curse, but yeah, if you take the right steps, it's manageable. Wow. Mm. So are you okay? There's nothing for you to worry about. Oh, you could it's equate that to a control. lot of different and things. As long as no one steals my elixir, then I'm fine. But hey, look at this. A human doing magic. Good on you, kid. I had some encouragement from a great teacher. Hey, hey! hey he's okay. Hoot, I'm on the floor. It's cold. <laughs> voice, that horrific voice. Well, oh, the of irony of that statement. Come on, you Because as you guys let me know, uh, they're voiced by the same person. No, oh. Not this memory again. Who cursed me, aren't you? Who are you? Who are you? <gasps> we have a little mystery on our fingers. Ah, uh, let's go. Finally, I get to be a part of something. And then you're a part of the house. Her stomach, teeth in her stomach. Can you believe that? This will make Wait, a great what? addition to my demon book. That book is filled with so many interesting things. I'm one of the strongest demons on the boiling aisles, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I might need to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> dude let's go oh that was a fun one because like as much as loose wants to feel important and special and all that like it just ties in to like her desperation to like be part of something special to be important to have these ambitions to strive for these things beyond herself is the reason she's after magic in, so, in this way to kind of like almost fill this void within herself to kind of prove that she's not like this thing that everybody else seems to think she is and all this. And her tunnel vision towards that caused the exact same thing to happen to King. He doesn't have anybody to talk to. He doesn't have anybody to share his interests with. He's trying to share it with her because that's all he's got in this moment. And, you know, they're both looking for the same thing, but she's so fixated on the magic portion of it she doesn't realize that she's doing to him what everybody else in the world has done to her. It honestly, it was starting to break my heart a little bit. Like, cause he genuinely was trying to like share a little bit about that. Cause like her obsession with that, I mean, hell, she's in this fantasy world. She's in this whole other world. Demons are real and they are an active part of this ecosystem in some way, shape or form. So why not take an interest in that as well? It makes him feel like what he is and what he knows isn't, important, isn't relevant, isn't necessary at all. It makes him feel belittled even more so than he already has been. And she doesn't really realize that until until later. When they finally start to kind of realize the weight of the situation that they found themselves in, especially when they also kind of find themselves in a position where they can actually talk about what's going on after their little quest to figure out how to help Luz do magic ends up unleashing Ida's curse. That design for her being like this physical owl monster is wicked and i'm not sure if the curse you know even you know set aside by this elixir is the reason for maybe some of these other kind of aesthetical uh design choices within her day-to-day -day life like with her hair you know her tooth and all these other things about her physically if those are kind of like a suppressed version of the curse because she does kind of like i mean like we saw it was a little gag there for a minute she does nest she does kind of get excited by shiny stuff it's like these vestiges of the owlness do still exist they're just kind of shoved away and this whole thing too like i was talking about like with ida and you know without 
managing this without this elixir, she turns into this thing. You know, some this this creature that runs around that isn't really her to an extent. You know, you could equate that to mental health, to depression, to whatever. Like there's a lot of different things you can connect that to. You know, like without management, whether it be anger, depression, or whatever, without like medication for some people who don't have a way to suppress these imbalances in their mind, they become prey to it. They become something else that maybe they don't find so desirable or is undesirable to the people around them that makes it to where they can't function in reality. That's what it made me think of. Like people who are on medication for like actual imbalances in their mind that they can't control or do anything about. And, you know, when she's denied that, she becomes this thing untethered and destructive. You know, it's just an interesting parallel because it's not just that because I think you could like look at a lot of different things up until this point in this show and find some kind of echo or metaphor or symbolism for a lot of real world issues. But on top of that though, that invites us into this mystery as Ida doesn't know when this curse really started. She doesn't know who cast it upon her. And in that little dream, you know, we see that silhouette and it seems like we got a little bit of a mystery to kind of understand. I'm wondering if that's gonna be like a long con kind of thing as we kind of dive into that um, over the course of this season or subsequent seasons or whatever because I'd be interested to know that, like who who did this to her? And that could be trauma. Hey, like here I am trying to relate it to anything, anything else, you know, this could be a trauma response, like an echo or a metaphor for that. This person, maybe she suppressed it, repressed whatever happened to her, and it's this trauma response, and then this is the only thing that helps kind of get her through her day, you know? The, obviously, there's a little bit of a play on that as well. Like, I'm, I'm, you don't want to see me without my coffee. You don't want to see me in the day without this stuff, you know? And then it has this an elixir a day, keeps the curse at bay. You know, it's this, I don't know, this, this mantra that you hear echoed in a lot of different ways, especially as they like to call out, for somebody up in her years. I don't know how old she actually is meant to be. Obviously she's got that flirty 30 uh, mug, but whatever, you know, I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting because there's, um, again, I don't know. I could be completely reading way too deep into this, but it's just, these are the places my mind has immediately gone. But on top of this mystery, on top of this little kind of barrier that needed to be broken down between Luce and uh, King here. We also open the door to magic itself, how it works. For witches, as we know or have learned, their hearts quite literally have like a magic sack. We learned also that magic used to be done differently. Maybe they evolved over time to make it easier for themselves and that's what came out of it. Maybe in the olden days, they did have to physically draw these sigils. And that way, if you don't actually have this sack, you can conjure it yourself into the world. I likened it to Full Metal Alchemist and the door. You know, like some people, if they've seen the truth, they can just clap their hands and do alchemy. Otherwise, any other alchemist has to actually spend the time to draw or inscribe the circles themselves. And that seems to be what she has to do here. She has to actually draw the rune the sigil itself in order to actually get the magic to spawn. So the magic itself is rooted in the glyphs, whatever you want to call it. And it's not really connected to her. So that just makes me wonder if, if anybody draws this, can it be done then? But she was able to actually achieve something today. She made a step forward. I don't know why, maybe it was like, cause it, her phone fritzed out during that recording when she watched Ida do it. And maybe it was like between the frames or whatever, there was this flicker of the real sigil at its core. Like Ida, like it being second nature and part of her being, when she just does the circle, her instincts, her mind fills in the rest. Like if she's just thinking about what she's wanting to do, it kind of fills itself in on intuition. It reads that thought and just does the circle. Because everything we've seen so far, it's literally Every spell is just a circle. But the truth of the matter is every one of those circles, you know, whether or not they are even aware of it, because quite clearly Ida is not, that there is a sigil that is being carven or drawn within the confines of that uh, circle itself. 
that they're not aware of. So if she can understand what that is and then replicate it, then she herself also can use magic. It's just like an extra layer to the magic system in this, or at least like a fleshing out of the magic system so far, because that's the most we've kind of got out of this. On top of that, as well, it's a little more world building. We got to see, you know, learn about a couple maybe fictional demons or not within this universe, because we don't know how many of the ones that King was talking about even exist. Like you completely missed the mark on this Snaggleback or whatever it was, because it was anything but what he described it to be. And then there's the rains, you know, the boiling rains that come out here, the different weather systems and weather phenomenon that we learned about in this as well that are as freaky as you would expect. That all said, man, another fantastic episode. You know, I, I love what they're doing with this. I love how far we've kind of come already in just four episodes, which makes me really excited to kind of get into some of the later stuff as we kind of get the world a little more grounded and rounded out and we learn more about it because already just in these first four episodes, there's just so much you can kind of read into. I don't know how much of that again is me projecting into this, but it just shows that all of these different things have these layers to them and it just makes it so much more fun to watch, to unpack. So I'm excited. I, I just, I've, I'm really, really getting enthralled with this show right now. So I think that bodes well for the future. So let's see what happens, man. But guys, I'm going to pass it off to you. So sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry the conversation after the video. I hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the full length reaction, you can check it out over on Patreon or for our members' channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Sherrick, Yorick Horskov, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey L., Jake Cottrell, Eric Official, Casey Wood, Russell Crockett, and Sam Oyer. Thank you guys so much for continued support. With that stuff, it's for you guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.